Hi everybody and welcome to our latest project out at North Ferriby. We've just completed this system and it comprises of three parts. We've got the new solar installation, we've got a Tesla Powerwall battery and also we've integrated all of that into the customer's original Zappi. So we're going to split this video into three parts. This is part number one and we're going to take you through the solar PV part of this install. So let's take it right back to the start. Before we installed anything on this job, the customer already had a three kilowatt solar PV system. Now this system was fit registered, which meant he receives payments from the government for whatever this generates. That's been unaffected by what we've installed. Our system actually works alongside his original system. All we've done is we've added him more power to give him more usable power during the day. And that can be put into the battery and everything, which is something we'll go through when we do the Tesla video. So let's take it right back to the start. Let's have a look at this system. So this is the customer's existing three kilowatt SMA Sunny Boy inverter. So this is an older style inverter, very, very robust inverters. And we've fitted quite a few of these back in the day when the feeding tariff was around. As I mentioned, this has been unaffected by what we've done, but I'll take you through some of the components on this original install. So we've got an AC isolator just here. We've then got the customer's generation meter. So this is logging everything that this older system is generating and therefore this is what he gets paid upon. We've then got the DC isolator here, which is isolating the cables coming from the roof, from the, from the panels, and that comes and feeds into this inverter. So that sits along happily in this install and generates as much power as it can. So I think now is a good time for us to go and have a look at the panels on the roof. So we're outside as you can see and it's absolutely freezing. That's why I've got a big coat on. But you'll see behind me, we've got the original panels on the roof. So that's feeding into that SMA Sunny Boy inverter that we showed you earlier. And then we've got our panels just behind me here as well, but they're on the extension and they're what's called an in-roof integrated system. So they're Viridian 340 watt panels and there are nine 340 watt panels. So that equals at around about uh, three kilowatts just over. Key thing with this though, we've actually integrated this system into a Velux as well. So we've had the Velux flashings integrate directly with the Viridian flashings. That means that we don't have to tile around the Velux and then to get the Velux flashings onto some tile and then a bit of tile for our Viridian flashings, none of that all the flashings merge together to make sure that there's no tiles on show and the only tiles on this job are actually around the sides and along the top we've got the bottom flashing directly into the gutter but let's have a look at the panels a little bit closer So now that we've seen the panels on the roof and how they all integrate, we're now back inside and we'll have a look at the solar edge inverter and all the associated parts. I'll carry on from where we left off. So we've got the cables that come from the panels. They come down here and into our DC isolator here. So we can isolate any power coming from the panels into the inverter if we need to do any maintenance or reset the inverter. So they come through this isolator and into the inverter here. We've then got the inverter itself. So this is a three kilowatt solar edge inverter and that speaks to those optimizers on the back of each panel to make sure that if this system is isolated we've only ever got one volt per panel so take an example of a horrendous situation that the house there's a house fire and therefore the fire brigade come they pull that main fuse on a standard system like the the old one they've still maybe got 500 volts coming down from the roof whereas as soon as this inverter turns off those optimizers on the back of each panel will only allow one volt to come into this house. So then suddenly we've only got sort of nine volts coming down into here. So if you've got an array of 15 panels, you've only got 15 volts coming down here. So that's DC safe. That's the function of the inverter. The other function of the inverter is to actually generate power. So this, like I mentioned, has got three kilowatts worth of capacity, so it can push out at any one time up to three kilowatts. It does that coming via this, this cable here. So that comes into this AC isolator and that goes through another generation meter, a bit more, but an updated version of the one we saw earlier for the old system. After that, it feeds down behind this board into our trunking and back to our main distribution board. So that is the, the SolarEdge system here, and we've got an internet connected via the 
antenna there for Wi-Fi. We've then got the indicator lights, we've got blue for internet connected, we've got solid green for generating, and we haven't got a red light, which is perfect, because that means there's a fault. You'll notice there's no screen on this inverter. All of the monitoring, the setup and everything is done via apps and online dashboards. So we've got the setup for the installers, and then we've got the storage monitoring apps for installers, but also for the customers. So that is the Solar Edge system in place. So as an MCS registered company, there's certain things we have to do. One of those is install this meter. The other thing is we have to provide schematics of how the system's been wired, where everything is, and also a start-stop procedure. We could give these to the customer and say these have to be displayed next to the inverter, but we've all been there with manuals and things like that. They get shoved in a drawer or even thrown away. So we've decided to install these document holds. And if you've been following us for a while, you'll see these pretty much in every single job. So we put these in here. It's also got the manual for the solar PV system. It's got the manual for the battery and everything else in it. So it's all in that in one place, which we found to be the best way to do it. So that when we come back in a couple of years, all the manuals, the schematic, anything else is all in one place. So that's what that is. So this is the Solar Edge app on the customer's phone. So they kind of lent me their phone to run through this app. So we can see at the top left hand corner, we've got production today of 3.5 kilowatt hours. That's just recording everything that this system has produced today. We've then got 1.1 kilowatt solar power now. So that's a live readout of what the Solar Edge system is generating. So that's not the old system. This is just purely the Solar Edge system that we've installed. We've then got the top right, four degrees. So it's not the warmest out here, but that's, uh, that's currently what the weather's like. If we move down the screen, we've got energy produced. We've got this month, this year, and lifetime. So at the minute, they're all in kilowatt hours. That's basically logging everything that this system is, is generating. We can see this month and this year is the same because this system's only been installed a month. We then move down the screen, we've got week, month, and year. So we can change the graph at the bottom to replicate either the the week, the month or the year and gives us all that data. So we're currently on month and we can see the dates along the bottom axis of the graph and then the amount of kilowatt hours up the side of the graph. And then if we click on them, it'll actually give us on the 11th of the first, on that day, it produced 1.17 kilowatt hours. And we can do that on any day, on any month, any day of the month or on any month of the year. So we can, we can run through all of that from the ease of this app, which is really good. We can then move down the screen. We've got comparative production. So month, quarter, and year. So on that, we can compare January in 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, and see how the system's been performing each month. And we can do that for every month of the year. We've then got a couple of environmental benefits here. So CO2 emissions saved and trees planted, which is one tree. We then move to the bottom of this, uh, of this bar and we click on the little solar panels. So this is now showing us what each panel has produced today. So we can see there we've got daily, weekly, monthly, yearly and total. So if I go to total, that'll change. So now we can see we've got 8.49 kilowatt hours in total for that top left panel. 8.79 for the one next to it and so on and so forth. You can see the one there above the gap is 7.08. I would assume that's because there's a little bit of shadow casting on that from the Velux as it's quite a low pitch on this system. Um, so that might be casting a little bit of shadow. But the benefit of that is we can see that that panel is underperforming. So if it was maybe one of these on the left hand side of that, we'd say, well, OK, there's no shadow from the Velux. So why are those underperforming? So we can actually dive into this a little bit deeper from our installer login. But as a customer, the customer can see everything they need to do on that. But then if we go back to the home screen, it's now adjusted the, the solar power now to 1.07. So you can see there it's quite a live view. And that's everything really. That's the ease of the app. Really nice app to use. And like I say, you can see exactly what each panel is performing. So that's the Solar Edge customer app. Thanks very much for watching part one of this three part series of videos. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the little notification bell. And as soon as episode two is ready to come out, you'll get notified. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.